Ah, I see a few weeds here. My name is Tom Lanini. I'm a Cooperative Extension Weed Specialist here at UC Davis and today I'm going to talk a little bit about when to apply herbicides timing wise and when I say timing on a yearly basis not necessarily on a daily basis but on a, a yearly basis and I've come to this site simply because it has a, a number of weeds and, and two in particular an annual uh, yellow star thistle, which I think most of you know, and a perennial down here is field bindweed. And typically you want to treat a yellow star thistle long before it reaches this stage, the flowering stage, because some of these flowers have already set seed and grown. You want to treat an annual plant when it's a seedling. Now, you don't want to treat when the first seedlings emerge simply because you'll have to retreat again to get subsequent emergence of seedlings. You don't want to wait until it gets this large because it's already produced seed and therefore these seed have going to produce new seedlings next year and so you want to really get it when it's the smallest point but yet all the germination has occurred. As opposed to your perennial and this being field bindweed, perennials are a little different. They have a very large root system and a, a, a small top system particularly in the spring and if you try to treat this in the springtime when it just starts a seasonal growth well basically you end up chemically mowing off the top of the plant. The carbohydrate movement is principally toward the top of the plant at that time. You put the herbicide in, which moves with the carbohydrates, and you kill the top portion, but you do nothing to the roots. If you come in the fall, that's the ideal time. Generally, you have a lot of vegetative growth for absorption of the herbicide. The herbicide will move down into the root system because that's when the plant's doing the storage into the roots for next year's growth. and so. The fall is when you get the most movement of the herbicide into the roots and have your best chance of actually killing the plant. Spring, summer months, you mow the top off. Winter you, or fall is when you really do your best job. Now, say you didn't want to use an herbicide. Say you wanted to just mow these plants. When would you do it? Well, in that case, it's a little bit different. Imagine an iceberg and you've got 80% below water and 20% above. Well, what you do when you mow this plant at ground level or a little bit below if possible, a uh, quarter inch, half an inch below, is you basically make that iceberg or this plant use up the energy reserves in the root system to grow another top. So once it gets another top, two to three weeks of age, you mow it off again. Now, I don't want to go longer than, say, three or four weeks, simply because at three or four weeks it starts sending energy down to the roots. And so mowing it more frequently prevents the energy from going back down, allowing it to, to resupply itself in a sense. And so mowing it frequently will eliminate it over time if you're consistent with your operation, doing this at about every three-week interval. In this final segment, we discuss the timing of different types of control strategies. For example, Post-emergent herbicides used to control annual plants need to be made after all the annuals have germinated and emerged. In addition, if physical mowing or damaging perennial plants is going to be used as a control strategy, it has to re be repeated many times and applied at the time when root reserves are at their lowest. Well, I hope that you've seen through the various modules that there are a number of different important considerations in developing effective weed control strategies that relate to understanding prevention and also understanding the biology of both annual and perennial weeds. Not only will understanding these principles allow you to develop more effective strategies and control programs within your own landscapes, but they also should allow you to develop more effective training programs for others.